there's several little parking areas. Um, this is the South one off Port Tobacco Road. And uh, room for, you know, three or four cars here. There's also a little parking lot across the street there and a turn. Hey there, everybody. How are you? It's good to be back on the trail again. Um, I am... Uh, I'm at Doncaster Demonstration Forest um, near Nanjamoy, Maryland. Um, it's kind of a obscure, out of the way place. Um, it's a uh, it's a managed forest, um, and like I say, they call it a demonstration forest. I think uh, they've got like sort of different styles of, of how to manage forest, and it's a training facility for uh, for the Forest Service. I'm not sure. I think it's mostly at the state level. Um, but you know, it's also got some trails that wind through here and some of them are logging roads and, and whatnot. So nothing particular striking, you know, ecologically or, you know, dramatic vistas about this place, but I've been, I've only been here once before and I kind of felt like it was a fail. Um, really poorly marked, which I didn't know last time, but now I know. Uh, and I wound up cutting it short because I spent so much time last time kind of worried about where I was. Um, which, you know, that's kind of fun in its own way. It just wasn't what I was prepared for, so mentally. So I'm out here again today. I'm going to give it a shot. And, um, not a whole lot of maps available for this place. I found um, a couple of things published by the local equestrian club. So... They've published kind of a network of maps that, uh, or a network of trails that one is a, about a nine and a half mile loop and the other is a four mile loop. And it turns out it's actually blazed for that, but only if you go clockwise. <laughs> Last time I was here, I went counterclockwise and no blazes at all in the direction I was going. They were all behind me. So, <laughs> so I'm trying clockwise and seeing if I can uh, really quickly get a, uh, the nine and a half mile loop in. Uh, we'll see if I've got time for that. Um, the uh, it's only about 15 degrees out here today. Um, so I did the old adage of uh, start start bold and or be bold and start cold. So I'm probably one layer down from what I need to be to be absolutely comfortable. But I've been hiking, I don't know, three quarters of a mile now. And I'm warming up to the point where where this is about right. But uh, the wind will come through, and particularly my face. Uh, it's pretty chilly. <laughs> so um, we had a week or so of single digit temperatures. And then it warmed up into the 60s for two days. Torrential downpours, thunderstorms even. And then it quickly on the back side of that front drop down into the teens again so that's where we are today there's some interesting ice that has come out of all of that a lot of frost heaves in the dirt and little frozen puddles and things um, so I'm not terribly worried about wet but I am curious as to how much ice I'll see and whether I have to traverse any low areas that are now frozen over so anyway like I say it's just good to be out by the way, I have no intention of staying the night or backpacking or anything, but if you've seen my other videos, I like carrying the pack regardless. Um, partly because it keeps me in shape. I'm sort of in a perpetual state of shaking down gear. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, I get used to having the load and that's a, a positive thing for when I go out and I really mean it. So. All right, we'll see how this works out. This is kind of cool. Dinosaur tracks. Looks like uh, two or three wild turkeys being followed by a dog. pretty neat. It's all frozen solid now. It's <laughs> not given. So this is probably a couple of days ago when it was warm. Now you can see it's all it's all frozen with 
air bubbles underneath. That's what's making it white. It's kind of cool. The red is nine and a half and the yellow is just under four. So they uh, intersect each other quite a number of times. So you can kind of do your own trip here, make your own distance. So here's something you may not know. Um, holly trees come in male and female varieties. Only the females have berries and they're fruiting this time of year. That's why we see them in all of the uh, winter and Christmas art and symbology. But the males do not have ba uh, berries. And here's one of those. Right next door, conveniently, for the hollies. There are a few obstacles on this trail but not too bad. Well, isn't this a shame? Man. It's been shot at so many times. Looks like the Bonnie and Clyde car. I don't know my American makes from this era all that well. Anybody know what this is? Look like uh, the badge on the, can't really read this. The badge on the trunk looked like it said Olympia, Olympian, something like that. Oh no, it's not Olympian, it's Plymouth. <laughs> Plymouth something or other. So this place does have its wild moments once you, uh, you get far enough north and away from the road. It's less like a tree farm, much more like a uh, wild woods. That's a big oak. There's your classic uh, pine tree farm look. All right, so I was just about to change my tune <laughs> and say that, uh, you know, maybe it's better marked than I thought it was. There are certainly places, particularly up there in that northwest corner, where the road takes a hard turn or there's an ambiguous intersection. and You know, it uses the two blazes with the top offset um, to make a clear distinction on where you should go. And that, you know, very helpful through there. So I was just about to say, yeah, maybe I've been too hard on it. <laughs> I came into a dirt road with a mark to turn right and that matched the map, but no indication of where to leave <laughs> that road. I went too far, realized it had to backtrack, sort of bushwhack, figure out where the, yeah. And it's, when you get to these five-way intersections where the, and here's where the, you know, the trail is definitely only marked in one direction. It's only marked clockwise. So it sort of assumes when you're coming into the, one of these five ways, that you're on one of those tracks and you follow it or come back in the other way and you follow it that way but you know if you if you come and get in even the slightest disoriented you can't tell which way is your way out right if you're trying to follow that route so this comes down to just don't care much where you're going and then you're fine well this is one of the uglier stretches Ooh, muddy um but uh you know, hey, it's a managed forest, which means I've gone from everything from tree farms to clear-cut areas like this to recovering farmland to uh, bottomland that hadn't been touched with huge oaks and beech trees. I've gone from walking on bare ground to uh, pine straw mats to beech leaves four inches thick. Um, 
On the other hand, I've also seen signs of turkey and deer. I've, uh, I've seen lots of birds flitting around through the underbrush. Um, buzzards and hawks flying overhead. I haven't seen any eagles today, but uh, you know, I'm sure they're around too. They're pretty common here. So, you know, it's been an interesting, an interesting time out. And uh, honestly, I just need an excuse. It's been a while. That's a deer, obviously, but that, I believe, is a possum. Alright, so I'm on the home stretch. Um, looks like it's going to be just about nine and a half miles, just like I thought. So even with the twists and turns. Um, you know, again, this is... Uh, there's no epic views here or anything, um, but it's an interesting little combination of ecosystems. And if you're just looking to get out and walk and get in the woods, you know, it could be worse. This is, this is not a bad spot. I'll be back. I'll give it another try. Check out how the uh, seasons change around here. So, until I get the chance to do out this out again, and I'm looking at uh, a couple of trips coming up, hopefully before the winter's over. Um, hopefully a couple overnights uh, before the winter's over. Hopefully work and home schedules will allow that. Um, but, uh, yeah, until next time, this is Troy from Flying Squirrel. Get out there. See ya. Bye.